Hey everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Skies of Arcadia Revisited. I'm Nye, and we are back on Pirate Isle, temporarily, uh, because I want to do a couple things over here. Namely, I want to run down here. We've got a moonfish right down here that we can grab really easily. Let's do that. There's two moonfish to be picked up on Pirate Isle, and I'd like to get them early, uh, mostly so we can get some early rewards going off a dock, which will help us move through the next area. It's a little bit quicker. Uh, his rewards are never really huge for the level, but they're all, I mean, they're not like, went the wrong way here. They're not huge to the point of making the game ridiculously easy for your level, but they will make things a lot faster, a lot easier, especially if they're the equipment rewards, because he has a lot of those. And typically they tend to be very good if you're able to get them early enough. So we definitely want to make sure we get them as early as possible. And uh, in this case, that means going back to Pirate Isle, we can waste a little bit of time. Uh, I did not have to abandon the escort quest. Uh, I did, uh, you know, I wanted to test that because I've never actually tested doing it in this order before. But uh, we did not have to abandon the escort quest. We were able to come right back to Pirate Isle with absolutely no ill effect. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, you can come all the way back here. I did fight a little bit. There were uh, there was a level I gained or something like that. But, um, you know, nothing particularly big, nothing particularly interesting. So, uh, the first one of our moonfish was right there. Now, the second one we're not going to be able to access because the second moonfish is right up there. You can even see it from where we are. Unfortunately, I'm not able to access it because that ladder is broken. But I did want to show uh, where it is as of right now. So we're just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, head on right back down here and jump right back on our ship. Yeah, I came all the way back here for one moonfish. We will eventually get that other moonfish. It's going to be actually really easy to do. We won't even have to climb that ladder to do it. Uh, we'll get that moonfish a little bit later on. So I did want to show that off, though. Really cool stuff. So we're going to go ahead and very quickly make our way back to Sailor's Island. I think I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through all of this. Me mean you guys don't have to deal with it. Jump back on the ship, and I will see you again in just a moment. We're back here at uh, Sailor's Island. I'm going to pop in here real quick. Uh, I was going to do this after we actually finished what we were doing, but I figured that I would do it right now uh, just so I can make sure I get out of the way, make sure I don't have to worry about it. So uh, we're going to go over here. Uh, I believe our first treasure chest is going to be behind this tree, which gives us repair kit for uh, three of those. Uh, it's used for repair your ship if your ship gets damaged. So we're going to grab that real quick. And then we have one more thing we have to do. He's going to be in the inn, and I actually should have done this while we were in here earlier, but I completely just up and forgot about it. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that we got this real quick. As, as I said, I wanted to make sure that we didn't miss it. No, notice that the uh, mystery merchant is not here this time. Uh, he will randomly pop up in uh, various places throughout the world. Uh, just, you know, he, he'll randomly be in various locations. He just doesn't happen to be at this particular location right now. Pop into this room open this to get 200 gold. Nothing amazingly special. I'm not worried, uh, you know, I wouldn't be worried about missing it except for the fact that I need to make sure I get pretty much every chest on the way through, and I don't ever want to have to go back, you know, in a later episode and go, oh dear god, I missed like two chests. Where are they? While we're here, I do want to run over here into the shop. I was earlier saying that I didn't want to get, uh, Drachma any weapons or armor, uh, but you know what? I've kind of changed my mind on that as well. I have the money available. But dropped by something better already. Okay. That's cool. We're done. I'm just going to go ahead and leave. And this will give us plenty of time to do the other things we have to do on this episode. So let's go ahead and run out and jump back on our ship. We're going to go give this fish to Doc real quick. Just so we can see what he'll give us. I can't remember what the next item is. But, um... We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Turn to our ship real quick. Yeah, let's go find Doc. Should be around here somewhere. He sta always stays around Sailor's Island. Uh, there he is. Look for the one with the red sail. Okay. Hi. Hi, Doc. 
If you come here and you don't have any moonfish, he'll make a comment about please go find moonfish from Maria, and you just leave automatically. So if you're wondering what happens if you don't have any moonfish, that's what happens. So it grows a little bit bigger. You can actually kind of see a marked difference in the size now. Uh, it's not always obvious, but um, let's get ourselves another hairball. And we got the flame mantle, which is uh, another accessory. I forget exactly what this one does, but you know it's always it's always a pretty good thing uh, to be keeping up. And that's an accessory that very likely we would not have gotten until probably after our next major dungeon. Uh, so it's good to have. Probably gonna put it on Aka. Uh, I can't remember. Is this an armor or is it an accessory? Looks like it must be an armor. Yeah, gives us much increased defense. It's another thirty defense for Vice. Uh, it's another what? 25 magic defense. That's actually a really big bonus right there. So as you can see, we're uh, it's not going to be like, um, you know, going to make me more powerful than I should be, but it is a pretty big difference uh, from what we already had. So I'm definitely glad I went back and picked that up. It's going to be the best armor we're going to have for Vice for probably quite some time. So we're just going to fly directly east as we were told to do. Notice how it's all sandy over the screen. That's not uh, it's not your TV. It's not your uh, TV. That's not your uh, monitor, that's not the recording, that is actually how the game gets when you go into a sandy area. And now we have found uh, Black Pirate Balter's ship, the Blackbeard. It's a cool looking ship. And here's the, you are about to fight a big opponent music in the background. And Air Pirate's telling uh, Baltor there's a Nasser merchant ship coming into view, but there's a strange ship following, it must be an escort, he doesn't recognize its markings. And Balter's already looking at us through his uh, spyglass there. And he can see us. Hi, how's it going? Nothing from sh uh, fear from a ship that old. They're going to introduce us to the true meaning of fear, and he's going to send us plummeting to our deaths. My, that's an ugly mug. Doesn't want us to escape. He wants to take everything on board that isn't nailed down. He thinks he's going to do something to us, and we're going to laugh him off. This uh, ship's flying straight towards us. There's a black skull and... Oh, hey, look, they're pirates. That's Balter. What do you want to do, Captain? Well, we're outnumbered, so don't let them board. We'll fight it out from a distance. Ready the cannons. If we see them attack, he wants us to go into evasive maneuvers, and then when they're in our sights, we're going to blast them. Sounds like a plan. Let's rip them to shreds. Sir! Okay, so Balter has quite a number of guns there. That looks like he has at least eight on each side. Uh, it's a pretty powerful ship. So he's going to teach us to tremble in fear before the power of the Black Pirates. Uh, that sounds like a thing. So uh, Drachma is going to teach us exactly how ship-to-ship -ship combat works, but I think I can describe it a little bit better. So ship-to-ship -ship combat is very different from the way normal combat is. Uh, as usual, we're going to plot out all of our moves in advance and then let them go depending on the quickness of the ship versus his uh, ship. But it's a little bit different because we're plotting all of our characters at the same time and we're going to decide in what order things are going to go. That 3x3 grid is allowing us kind of like a, uh, a logic plot to decide exactly what move we're going to do. So if I use Vice, you can see that I have 6 spirit up there. So we have 26 spirit total. A lot of it's from the ship by itself. So I have 6 spirit up there, and I have 4 cannons. So what I can do is I can have Vice use a cannon on any turn I want him to use. So say I wanted to use that cannon there. Well, that entire turn is taken up. Only Vice can use that turn. Now, Aka and uh, Drachma need something to do as well. They can use an item, they can guard, which will do as exactly as it would in a normal fight. We'll take less damage from that turn. We can also attack if we have enough SP to do so. We don't. Uh, they could use magic. Only certain spells actually work on the ship. So, uh, unfortunately, Sakri does. Pyrite doesn't. Crystalli doesn't. Ingram does. Or I can have him her focus and get us some SP, which is, in fact, what I'm going to do with all of my characters. We're just going to focus up and get some SP going. And then once the turn goes, it's just going to simulate what went on during that turn. So we're going to go, and uh, Balter's going to go. And you'll see the ships intertwine. They'll dance around. Balter's going to fire at us. If I had used my guns, we'd fire back. Notice that he has a good 16 cans to my six. So he's, you know, I mean, we, he's got a lot of firing there. And you can see, we only have about 10,000 health. He's doing about 1,500 or so every time he shoots us. So it's, uh... Yeah. It's a, it's a thing. So we don't necessarily want Balter to actually take all these pot shots at us. So I don't want to allow him to do as much as he's doing. But uh, I do want to make sure that I have plenty of attack power to go around. 
he's gonna keep on firing his black cans at us. That time he got a really big attack in and did about 2,500 damage. So we've taken a lot of damage over the course of the past three turns. Struck us that every once in a while we'll see a column with a C at the top of the grid like you see over there in the next turn in the middle. During that turn we'll have a tactical advantage over our opponent for some reason and we'll be able to do more damage on that round than we would turn, uh, differently. And then some rounds are going to have different colors. Green means that we're typically not going to take a lot of damage during that turn. Yellow, he's going to use a fairly powerful attack that will do a little bit of damage. And then red, he will do a lot of damage. And I need to keep myself fairly careful. So what I want to do is to make sure that I guard during that yellow turn. Because he's going to do a lot of damage and I'm already at less than half health. I don't want to have to deal with that. I'm going to make sure that Aka uses Inkram because we actually can use that spell during combat. Now keep in mind that Inkram only increases the ship's uh, power by two turns instead of permanently throughout the course of the fight. So I only want to use that when I have the ability to do a lot of damage in one turn. And I'm going to let uh, Drachma use the standard cannon on the C turn so we deal some damage. So we'll do increased damage on the C turn, more than we would normally, and then uh, Vice will go ahead and defend us during the next turn. And hopefully we'll do a lot of damage back and keep myself alive for the following turn so I can heal up and get everything else done. So we've powered ourselves up, now we've got increased defense, we've got increased attack, and we're going to do a defensive move on the turn after this one. Uh, I'm actually kind of worried about my health right now, uh, possibly should have healed. We're going to do a big attack on this guy. Standard Cannon is going to deal 4,000 damage. Uh, that's both Ankrum and with our command attack turns. So that was a pretty big deal. So now Balter's going to do something pretty big while we take evasive action. Sometimes evasive action will allow me to dodge the attack entirely. Sometimes it means I'm just going to take less damage. In this case, I'm just going to take less damage and almost got myself killed. So we definitely want to make sure we heal up next turn. He's going to turn hard to starboard and try to maneuver behind him. And sometimes in combat, what will happen is between turns, there will be a quick little cutscene like this one, where it tells me that something's about to happen. And so I'll be given a choice about what I want to do in return. So he's going to try to get behind us because our engines are in the back, and if he shoots out our engines, we can't move. But he'll be wide open while we, you know, while he does that. So I have a choice of, being, of trying to get behind him instead and trying to wait to see what he does. I'd rather try to get behind him instead. He won't be expecting us to do the exact same thing he's trying to do to me. Typically, we would just circle around each other over and over and over, but this guy is kind of stupid. But the ship doesn't have any cannons in the back, so we've got a wide open shot at his engines. Typically, that should mean that I'm not going to take any damage during this turn. The problem is, I've taken a lot of damage over the past couple of turns, so I need to make sure that I heal up during this fight. Luckily, I'm able to heal up, and it takes, uh, I think it takes a little less SP than normal, so I can get myself nice and healed up. And because I'm behind him, I don't think he has any chance to actually attack. And when I say behind him, I mean we're right next to him, but shh, let's not talk about that. So we heal up for two turns while he does little to nothing. He's going to assess his damage, which is just uh, the game's way of telling us that he has no way to do anything else. We like that. Heal up again. Now we're almost to full health. And I really wish we got an HD remix of this game at some point. Uh, one that would actually show like damage to the ship as it gets shot, and then all the parts come back onto it as we heal. It would be a cool little effect. Okay, so we're going to get one shot off to the back of him. Do a lot of damage. It's 5,000 damage right there. This guy is almost gone. He is almost history. Uh, we're almost done here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to fire all because there's no possible way he's going to beat us in one turn, especially like this. Fire our cannons as long as we hit, and we did. His ship's going to go down in flames. By go down, I mean toddle off somewhere because we didn't sink him. So we get some experience for our actual characters. It's not the ship that gets the experience, and it's almost enough to level us up. We also get the Captain's Strike, and we get a bomb as well, in addition to 300 gold. Okay. So we're getting a quick little cutscene in return. Bye, Balter. You suck. He's really pissed. Yeah, our old ship beat the crap out of yours. He's gonna swear on the code of the Black Pirates, and we will rue the day we ever cross paths with him. And someone needs to put out that fire. And it's time for us to celebrate. We did it! Woohoo! Wonderful! Quick, it's time for the handshake! Amazing stuff. And then, time for Drachman to beat the crap out of Vice. We're not there yet! Never take your hands off the wheel until we come to complete stop. This is really important uh, advice for you kids who are just learning how to drive. Don't do it, it's a bad idea. So, we should watch what we're doing, because Captain Drachma is going to keep us in line if we don't. Thank you, Aka, for that little help. And there's the pissed off vice look. We used to beat a ball to the scary. Why don't we lighten up for a little bit? Because we're not done yet. 
we've almost completed the side quest it's keeping away from our other side quest that hasn't even started up to the main quest yet I mean we're we're not quite there Aka we need to have a sense of proportion here girl okay so uh, drachma is gonna talk about the captain stripe I'm gonna ignore all the information and tell you about it myself so if we go into our items and go into ship items which is this one right here and use our captain stripe it's going to increase the little jacks uh, health by about a thousand which is good. It's also going to increase a couple of our stats, I believe. Uh, some people believe that if you do that, you won't be able to... Like, it won't carry over to any other ship you get throughout the game. Completely untrue. If you get any other ship throughout the game, every Captain Stripe you use on every previous ship will then extend to every succeeding ship. So don't worry about that. Use your Captain Stripes as soon as you get them. Otherwise, you're just risking getting killed in a fight when you shouldn't. So we have reached Nasser. This is the fleet that guards the southern Danel Strait. They're going to escort our merchant. And our merchant's going to follow up his end of the bargain, right? Notice the big ass inch on the back of his ship. And the two and the uh, floating engines beneath. Yes, we have safely brought you home, because we are awesome. He gives us the balloon passport. And that little piece of paper is going to get us into Plua. Wasn't all that hard, right? Off goes the Nasser Merchant. May the Red Moon watch over you and light your path. Why, thank you, sir. And may, uh... May things happen to you which are better than the things you wished upon me. And now we get to go off to the Lua. Let's not waste any more time. Aye, aye. Turning 180 degrees around... We're tilting for some very odd reason I'm not entirely sure about. And it's time to whoosh. Ready? Whoosh. Okay. Well, that's all done now. We just received a Valuan passport to go with our other key items, which we'll never have to use again. Remember that raw moonstone we had to go get a while back? I wonder what happened to that. Uh, so now we're done with just about everything... Uh, Done with just about everything non-story or uh, that's not storyline related. Let's get rid of a couple of these guys. Get these out of the way. Shouldn't take too long. So we have uh, we're currently caught up on all the moonfish that we can currently access. We're caught up on all the discoveries we can currently get. What I could do is I could go to the Sailor's Island and turn in the discovery that I just got, but I'm gonna be able to turn that in in just a few moments, anyways. So we're just gonna uh, actually nope, Aka, I want you to land burst. We'll do a little bit of damage, and then we'll be just about it. Because we have this AoE ability, we should be able to kill everything really fast, which is awesome. So if you were trying to get your uh, characters caught up, if you wanted to be a little bit overpowered, or if you want to make sure that you were just altogether, like, badass, this would be the time when you'd want to level up a little bit. It's not going to be an incredible thing. You definitely, uh, we got two Maraca shells there. Uh, you definitely don't want to be over-leveling here, because there's really no point. There's not a lot of experience to be had in this area, and there's not a lot of magic experience. But if you were kind of neglecting leveling up uh, your red magic or your green magic, this is going to be about the time you're going to want to start doing that. And in fact, I'm probably going to switch over to red magic in just a few moments to make sure that I have everybody with Ingram. Uh, and then we'll start doing, I think, green magic a little bit more. Blue and... Uh, I don't think I'm going to want blue and purple all that much. I may try to get silence with purple. It's going to be about it, though. So let's move through here. I'm trying to speed through these fights as fast as possible. Uh, while still explaining what I'm doing, because I don't like fast-forwarding all that much. This episode's already probably going to run a little bit short. I'd rather not run, you know, too short, you know? So we're going to go ahead and continue fighting. All these uh, guys are really, really easy. I think we're already over-leveled for the area, to be completely honest. Which is good, because the next area can be a complete nightmare if you're not leveled up correctly. And uh, Aka and Vice will eventually catch up with Captain Brock. I could go to Sailor's Island and turn in, um, I might, I'm thinking about it. Now that I've thought about it, I think I'm probably going to go to Sailor's Island and go ahead and use, uh, not use, but turn in all the stuff that I just got. Uh, you know, the, uh, the discovery that I haven't turned in yet and, uh, turn in my kill on Baltor, my defeat of Baltor. Get myself a little bit more money because I would like to be able to use that on, uh, equipment a little bit later on, because there will be another store at our next port of call. So we're just going to continue flying straight on east here. Or straight on west, rather. So 
Let's grab ourselves a couple of fish on our way through. Continue on west here, let's take a look at our map. You can see that our map is filled in a little bit more, and we are actually north of Shrine Island by quite a ways. Let's go ahead and head south here. There we go. Eh, darn it, it's another fight. level up or two, which is absolutely fantastic. And we're going to head into Shrine Island, or not Shrine Island, but Sailor's Island. How many times have I said that so far? We're going to go into Sailor's Island real quick now, and just head into the uh, Sailor's Guild just so we can turn in these things, get a little bit of money going. The more money we can have going on at any given time, the better, simply so we can make sure... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, blah, blah. Okay, so we'll automatically give us the reward for the bounty, which is fantastic. And then we can just go ahead and sell the info of the Guild Stones... You'll notice that he's not particularly excited about this particular one. Here, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard of its, I've heard of its existence. That's fantastic. I'm so glad for you. And that's about it. Okay. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head through these doors back to our ship. We're gonna go directly north from here. We're gonna head back into the direction of Valua. That way we can make sure that, uh, you know, we get in. Now that we have the Valuan Passport, it's going to be really easy. And then we can plan from there on out uh, to find our way into uh, saving uh, Captain Dine. And you'll notice that golden moon that was slowly lifting up. Show me your passport. Oh, hey, passport? Got one right here. Take your time looking it over. It's all valid. We may proceed. Proceed? Just, just flying into Valua, right? Just about as easy, easy as that, isn't it? Steady on. We made it through. Just passed a blue and security checkpoint. That's an accomplishment. Achievement unlocked. Passed through blue and security checkpoint. Now all we have to do is sneak into Valua, but there's something really bright in front of us. And that's the only entrance into the city of Valua, known as the Grand Fortress. Valua is surrounded by impassable mountains. That's the only way in or out. Yeah, that thing is... You don't really see how huge the thing is, because the sense of depth just isn't there. Uh, apparently during the Valua Nasser War, they were at a fight at some point, over 100 Nasser warships bombarded this fortress for days and days and days, but all the shells were repelled by these walls, made out of unobtainium. The fortress may be the strongest structure of the New World. And now it spins. It's moving. Check out all damn guns. There's a lot of guns on that thing. Someone's compensating for something. Looks like there's some textures that aren't quite loading up. It's kind of weird. And here come the ships that are pouring out of Valua, and we're part of the ships that are going into Valua. So that is passing in and out. That's rather epic. We gotta beat that. The door of the fortress opens only once a day to allow ships to pass through. The back side of that wall is completely lined with cannons. It was those cannons that nearly wiped out the entire Nasser fleet. Defense and offense all in one. It's an invincible fortress. And that's where they're holding Captain Dine and Fina. No prisoner has ever escaped from that fortress. Although I've uh, heard that there's one way out. Really? That's possible. Yep. After they execute you, your corpses are thrown off the island. Really helpful information. Well, we're going to go in and figure something out. No one's ever escaped because Vice has never tried. Let's go. He loves a challenge, and uh, because it's Vice, you know, we're sure that he's going to escape from that fortress. It's, yeah, it's going to be easy peasy, right? So time for everybody to go in. There's a lot of shit moving in, and you just, like, you can't really see the sense of scale on this fortress. There's just no... There we go. So you can see how huge this thing is. So those holes there on the side, 
ships go through those holes. That's how big this thing is. It's a very imposing thing. You get the sense of, you know, insignificance compared to these. Those are gigant those are islands of with cannons on them in front of this thing that are tiny. Those big searchlights, you could probably land a ship on one. I mean, this thing is huge. And we've got to beat it. It's going to be easy, right? Yeah, I thought so. So now we got Ramirez and Lord Galcian once more. The admirals have assembled as Galcian commanded. So uh, apparently it's time for us to meet the admirals, and I can see at least one of them that I know. What's up, Alfonso? We've got five admirals here. So, uh, he's offering his gratitude to each of them for coming up so quickly. And they have successfully captured a citizen of the Silver Civilization, as Empress Theodore requested. And uh, the old admiral is, uh, ex uh, surprised at this. The big one is amazed. <laughs> That's Alfonso. He's apparently the first admiral of the Armada, and he's the one that found the, uh, founder. Crippled her ship by shooting at her because she was defenseless, and then captured her, but his vice captain betrayed him. So he lost her. As Gregorio was the second admiral of the Armada, and Empress Theodora is probably very pleased that the girl was recovered. So we need to persuade her to give her the informa give them the information they need. Be worth all that effort. And that's Vigoro. He's the third admiral of the Armada, and uh, he's amazed that she's a woman. He's getting excited <laughs> all over it. Notice the key around that very thick neck of his. And that hairstyle. God, how old is she? Is she good looking? Does she wear leather? I like my women wild and crazy. <laughs> That's Beleza, who's the fourth admiral of the Armada. And uh, she knows this girl's shy and demure. Her name is Fina, and she's currently being escorted to see Empress Theodore at the Imperial Palace. And lastly is this dude, DeLoco. The insane one, but no, really. He knows that he's like Bubble Boy. He's apparently Beleza's their espionage expert, and he's just talking to himself for no particular reason. <laughs> apparently, he's the head of weapon development, and apparently has a vested interest in the technology the Silver Civilization is known to possess. I don't know how he knows about this, but there you go. Galzin's gonna head back to the Imperial Palace and await for Princess Empress Theodora's orders to commence the search for the Moon Crystals, whatever the hell those might be. And Fina is apparently their ally, or probably being coerced into being so, and is going to aid them somehow into gathering all six of these moon crystals, which sound an awful lot like MacGuffins from around the world. And as for Alfonso, apparently he lied in his report, and as punishment, he is now relieved of his position as commander of the Mid-Ocean Fleet. And for an indefinite period of time, he's going to be confined to some place called Ixataka, which is probably not a good thing. Alfonso looks a little bit pained by this discovery. Either that or he's constipated. I'm not quite sure which. But uh, you, you think that I lied about my report, sire? <laughs> what are you talking about? You're attacked by air pirates and you deserted your crew and your ship to save yourself. Your ship and your crew were released by the air pirates and returned recently and they filed a full and accurate report. Ah. <sighs> I almost feel bad for him. Almost. Our armada is invincible, and showing any sign of weakness is unforgivable. I trust that you'll not forget that, says the big man the Black Cloak. The meeting's over, and all of them are going to be ready to depart for some place at a moment's notice. Everybody listens to him. You can see what a badass Lord Galcian's supposed to be. So here we are again, drifting through just behind the Grand Fortress. And this is the capital of Valua. Very impressive place. The skies are very, very gloomy. Because apparently, the fierce thunderstorms caused by the yellow moon mean shrouded in eternal darkness, which has got to really suck, because that game was scary. So that's the Imperial Palace straight up ahead. On the left side is the upper city. Shining gem. Everybody up there is very, very rich. And the other side is the very poor people. Both of them hate each other. Only the rich are up in the upper city. The people who are poor are confined to the lower city on the right-hand side, and you can see how dark and gloomy. Uh, yeah, it's a very 99% thing. Huh. Now, we're going to land in lower city, apparently, because, you know, we're not allowed to dock and remodel the I upper know. city. We're not rich like that. 
I got about 3,000 rich, but we need like 300,000 rich to be worthy of that. I'll get there eventually. And here comes the depressing music. The very oppressed music. Lower City looks just terrible up close. Everything uh, smells like garbage. Especially the people. The people smell like a lot of garbage. The people are garbage. And hey, look, it's a little snot-nosed kid. So we need to check the place out, find a way to save Dad and the others. So the captain is gonna... Eh, we're just gonna go do something. He's overseeing the installation of the harpoon cannon. He's not gonna help us. You know he's not. So we're gonna split up. We're gonna check out the city. He's gonna get to the cannon, and we'll meet the inn eventually. Yeah, we'll see ya. Off you go, Captain. You notice that he has a sword that he never uses? Well, that's gonna be it for me, guys. We're gonna go ahead and save in slot A. We had a lot of cutscenes just now, but don't worry. We're gonna have a lot more cutscenes soon before we go into our next dungeon. I'll see you guys next time, and we'll head throughout the city of Valua, see what we can find. I'll see you soon.